Well, thank you very much, Anna, and it's a real a pleasure to be back here at the Oxford Farming Conference in what is undoubtedly an important year ahead. And I completely understand uh, that for many uh, there's apprehension because uh, there's undoubtedly still a lot of uncertainty around. But in the weeks ahead, I think that clarity and certainty will prevail one way or the other because Parliament, of course, has some important votes ahead. Now, I know that uh, this morning's session is very much focused uh, on exports, but to put things into context, I wanted to touch briefly on our domestic market because it is important to recognise that the UK market uh, by value is, I think, the third largest import uh, market in the world. It is a big, valuable market that a lot of other countries seek access to. And it's also the case that in recent decades, we've been on a rather different journey to countries like the United States. Here in the UK, particularly since uh, problems such as BSE, we've seen a growth uh, in interest in consumers in the provenance of their food, a development of uh, more local distribution chains. And everybody has played their role in this. Supermarkets have recognised changes in consumer demands and have adjusted their supply chains accordingly. Farmers have reacted to that market. And yes, the government has regulated to ensure that we have the highest standards in the world when it comes to food safety and to animal welfare. And it is important uh, that we safeguard what we collectively have created here in the UK, which is one of the most sophisticated and most vibrant food markets in the world. So the first thing I want to say is that there are many opportunities for import substitution. And depending on the type of arrangement that we have with the European Union and others in the future, there may be opportunities to displace Irish beef from the UK market, opportunities to displace Danish or French dairy products, and opportunities to displace uh, horticulture from the Netherlands. We are already self-sufficient in many sectors, uh, such as uh, carrots and peas and other uh, veg sectors. We've seen huge progress in soft fruit, where we've displaced uh, Dutch fruit and where we've displaced um, fruit from the United States in recent years. And we've also seen progress in other fruit sectors, such as top fruit. But returning now to the export opportunities, there are uh, offensive export opportunities in future trade deals we might do. In particular, there are major opportunities for British dairy in the United States. Uh, we have already have some great success stories such as OMSCO, which exports uh, British organic cheeses to the US and is a major uh, player in that market. Uh, the US market uh, in cheeses is underdeveloped, but there is a lot of demand for the premium products uh, that we produce, which simply are not produced uh, in the United States domestically. Uh, turning to lamb, uh, there are opportunities in the Middle East. We've recently sought uh, and uh, secured an agreement with Kuwait to open the market there. Similarly with Saudi Arabia, we already export lamb uh, to uh, Dubai. Uh, it's a market that's currently dominated by uh, Australasian countries, in New Zealand and uh, Australia, but there is no reason why we couldn't also access this particularly lucrative market. There are opportunities too when it comes to lamb to develop the market in the United States. It's a small underdeveloped market at the moment, uh, but there's a growing trend among younger consumers in the United States uh, to try different dishes where lamb is part of the mix. And it may well be uh, that uh, New Zealand as a Southern Hemisphere producer could supply the US with lamb for part of the year, while the UK uh, could, produce, could produce lamb for it for the other part of the year. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, at the Far East is an incredibly important opportunity. We already export huge amounts of uh, beef and lamb uh, to Hong Kong. Uh, volumes to Hong Kong grew from 4,000 tonnes in 2016 to 7,000 tonnes last year in beef alone. Uh, we've already got a memorandum of understanding with China to be able to export beef direct uh, to China. Um, we're at the process at the moment of exchanging questionnaires and seeking inward uh, veterinary inspections so that we can gain access directly to the Chinese market soon. And finally, uh, in the last year, we've also concluded memorandums of understanding uh, with both Japan and with India to begin the process uh, of opening those markets too. So there are many, uh, many opportunities uh, as we face the future, offensive opportunities uh, for uh, the producers that we have in this UK in a range of sectors, but also opportunities for import substitution. Thank you. <laughs>